So what's up guys, welcome along to today's episode of First Rides. Today we're going to be taking this bad boy, Honda Big Ruckus, out for a spin. So here she is sports fans, the Honda Big Ruckus or PS250. Very rare machine here in the UK. We're going to take it out for a quick spin, give you my first impressions. And then we will get off, have a proper walk around and a look at some of the features of the machine. So, oh yeah, oh there she is. Right, let's go shall we? Beautiful spring evening, not quite summer yet. And we're off. Wee! Right guys, here we go. So, something a bit different for the channel today. This machine here is the Honda PS250, otherwise known as the Big Ruckus. Very, very rare here in the UK, but a massive following, or quite a big following, out by our friends in the great US of A, and also big out in Japan. So let's run for a few specs first. It is a 250cc single cylinder um, four stroke water cooled single overhead cam pushing out a mighty 19 horsepower that's coupled to a wet weight of around circa 170 kilograms so she's quite a heavy old girl for a little 250 and I think a average fuel economy of around 37 kilometers per litre for anybody who cares about how much MPG they're going to get riding a motorcycle. Not me. So, what is this bike all about? Well, this was part of the Honda N project, the Team N project, which was the new project by Honda. So this was a team of guys who were to develop bikes basically for the younger, more youthful generation. Um, and therefore style it appropriately so they've based this the, the the brief for this i believe was quite a rugged framed a rugged design on the frame big wide tubular frame that you can see and then coupled so it's the kind of big brute and then you couple that with the american cruiser or chopper style scene i suppose with these footboards down here let's get past this learner shall we and a laid back riding position, quite high bars. That's the kind of look they were going for. So it is certainly a Marmite machine. Look at this guy in front. I see what he wants. He wants a Honda Big Ruckus. <laughs> so yes, as I say, a Marmite machine. The looks certainly define this bike. You either really, really like it or, like most people I should imagine, absolutely hate it. My personal opinion? Should we go around this guy? Let's do him. Where are these clowns going? Nobody wants to let the big ruckus pull out. Scared of its power, I should imagine. We're off. So as we were saying, what were we saying? The styling, the Marmite styling. Yeah, it's the defining feature of the bike really, because um, obviously it's the first thing you see when you look at it, and it looks like nothing else you've ever seen, unless you've done some kind of dissection of a fly or an insect, maybe that bears some sort of resemblance. I do actually think the headlights, the arrangement with the headlights, remind me of the original Fireblade from Honda back in 93 with the with the twin headers. Obviously they had a fairing around it, but you take that away, they look very, very similar. I really like it. I like it because it's different and you don't see many things like this around and I like to be different and individual. So I like the styling of it. It's a different bike to what I'm used to riding, but I like riding any motorcycle, so I don't really care what it is as long as you're out on the open road. So yes, I like the styling because it's different. A lot of people disagree with me, 
and that's why it's such a marmite machine it's got to go and drop drop some bloody parcels back for the missus again eh is anybody else just spend their entire life returning parcels for their partners so they order all this stuff turns up at the house and then they decide they don't want it and they send it back it's almost like a game i think so here we are nice gentleman he just wanted a better look at the ruckus didn't he yeah so here we are again back at the drop box so we'll reconvene once we have dropped so the parcel has been parceled ready to hit the road again oh, on the reliability right so let's get going again so where were we the big ruckus it is a scooter it's classed as a scooter but i say the cc size 250cc and it's quite heavy and it's quite long it's a big old long beast so it doesn't necessarily feel like a scooter when you're riding it it's not quite as nimble it's still got very small tires on it but it's not as nimble and agile as your standard scooter i suppose we talked about the power the immense 19 horsepower and we talked about the weight we forgot to mention that they're actually built from 2004 until 2007 in japan this one's been imported to the uk uh, and has actually just been sold uh, it was my father-in-law he's had it for a few years so yeah it's just been sold lucky new owner so yeah they were they were made from 2004 to 2007 this is a very very late 2007 model so one of the last ones ever made oh and that single cylinder four-stroke engine is coupled to a cvt transmission so they're actually quite a tunable machine if you start playing around with the variators and the roller weights and tuning the carburetors up etc etc like i say big big following for these out in the united states of america out in japan a lot of builders and uh, tradesmen use them for various things they will strap their plumbing pipes down the length of the bike and carry it on to go and do their plumbing jobs or on the rear when we have a walk around you'll see the, the luggage rack they'll extend that and actually use it to carry bricks around on to quite a universal machine really it's obviously not built to be doing top speed so we're not going to take it on a top speed run we're going to take it to its natural environment and give it a little run around the towns filtering in and out of traffic pottering about and see what we think of it very first impressions super comfortable really really comfortable uh, it's got this very weird seat arrangement on the rear which we'll see again when we go off and have a look around the bike but it means that you're basically sitting in an armchair with your arms just in the right position feet on these footboards you couldn't ask to be more comfortable you could ride it around all day long brakes hmm when you're pulling them you are thinking maybe why has somebody replaced the pads with bits of plywood but it's never going to be I'm, i suppose i've been a bit spoilt with sports bikes and the likes and riding around with high performance machines so it does the job it stops the bike like i say it's quite a heavy bike at around 170 kilos but it does go quite well for a little 250 cc single obviously it's never going to be a gp race bike but it will do well we'll find out shortly but i imagine it will quite happily do 70 miles an hour down the motorway so that's all you need to do isn't it that's the national speed limit here in the uk Obviously, you don't need to go faster than 70 anywhere. Front and rear brake, as you'd expect of a scooter. No clutch, variable transmission. So very easy to just jump on and scoot around on. So this is what the big ruckus was built for, darting around these little back lanes. Without having to put your feet down, no clutch on your hand. It is quite, as you can hear in my voice, quite a bumpy ride, quite a rough ride. 
it's not really going through my bones it just you can feel it's up and down but then that is the state of the uk roads at the minute to be honest small tires so they haven't got huge sidewalls on them so let's go and find somewhere busy like we say and see if we can see if people look at me like i'm a complete nutcase riding around on this he likes it oh yes so we've got our speedo in kilometers because it's an import from japan um very very simple dash layout there what more do you need got speedo indicators main beam if it overheats a parking brake light that is because this old weapon has actually got a parking brake on it which we'll see shortly so yeah quite a simple machine not a lot to go over with it really i mean obviously there's no traction control abs multiple engine braking maps or anything like that on this switch gear you've got all your standard motorcycle bits headlights indicators horns kill switches you have got a hazard light which is ideal if you do ever stop at the side of the road or break down quite a good machine for delivery driver i should imagine this actually um you got your classic japanese style with your indicators lit up all the time as side lights which i really like something different shows it's an import your front brake is a i think it's a nissan uh caliper can't see from here is it a yep so Nissan caliper on the front, single disc I believe, rear is a drum brake, hydraulically operated rear drum brake. And yeah, this is its natural environment around a town centre, nipping around in and out of traffic. It's actually quite quiet this evening, which I'm really surprised at, given the weather. So we can't really show you how nimble and agile it is, but you kind of get the idea, don't you? still getting looks from people wherever you go this is the thing with any rare machine no matter if it's uh, deemed beautiful or ugly it stands out and if it stands out people are interested hola 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 now is she spanish or is she called hola who knows it does pick up quite well away from the line although I'm not going to lie, it's probably not the first choice of machine that I would pick if I was in a police chase, I think. Although you might be able to evade them if you was nipping through all the back roads. Oh, there's Ola! Ola! But I'm not condoning getting yourself into a police chase, so don't do that. So yeah, it is nimble and agile, as a scooter should be. It does look very, very rugged and very distinctive i think they've hit the brief with that whether it appeals to the younger generation of japanese i don't know because i'm not japanese um but yeah not sure how many they built with these in total and i'm not sure how many still exist or have left japan and i don't even know if they actually directly imported them to america or if they all had to be imported from Japan. I don't know that much about it, which is <coughs> my own bad doing, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. I'm not really one for stats on bikes and things like that. I'd rather just get out and try and ride them and experience them for myself. Let's open her up, full gas. Here it is. Unbelievable, Jeff. Good chip shop, that one. You can see how busy it is on a Friday night. So we've been cruising around on this big old brute for around 15, 20 minutes now. Uh, let's give you some initial reactions to it. Super, super comfortable. First thing you notice when you get on it, really comfortable, easy riding position. You can jump on this and ride it straight away. If you're looking for something like, if you're interested in, a, say, maybe a smart car or something to nip around the town and park up in, but you're not interested in big motorcycles, really, this doesn't feel like that. This is something you can quite easily just get on, twist and go, filter through the traffic, stop, put luggage on the back of it. Super user-friendly and very, very comfortable. That helps with these running boards, position of the bars, etc. And how simple it is to use. There's nothing complicated about it at all. All your standard controls, so that helps. 
the brakes aren't marvellous but then I'm probably expecting too much it's never going to break and perform like uh, a pair of Brembo monoblock calipers with some hell lines and a mass cylinder so they do the job it's quite a weighty old beast 170 kilos so it's got quite a lot of weight to stop on a little single disc and a drum brake so yeah I mean it does well for what it is the price of these at the minute in the UK they're very very rare to come up for sale so they kind of I suppose you could pick a real scabby one up that wasn't very original for scooter for probably around three thousand pounds but if you were looking for a really exceptional mint example super super low mileage original handbook everything else you'd probably be looking more in the four and a half range uh, this particular model has covered 15,000 kilometres and how is it showing those kilometres? Well, it's Honda isn't it? It's Honda build quality. So it's obviously been well looked after for its life but when you sit and you look around the bike it looks pretty much immaculate really as it's come out of the factory. It's probably even got the original grips on it to be fair. Maybe even the original tyres, who knows? But yeah, as you'd expect from Honda, great build quality, all the fasteners in it, all the fixings, all the screw heads, none of that's gone rusty, none of the wheels have corroded, none of the frames corroded, all the powder coating on the frame is all in good condition. So yeah, not anything to worry about with your build quality, as you'd expect from Honda. Yeah, it's an enjoyable thing to ride. The golden question, would I part with my own money to purchase one? well i'm not looking for a scooter so it's hard to answer but if i was looking for a scooter i'm not sure really if i'm honest what else is out there on the market but if i was this would definitely definitely be there in contention after i'd ridden a few other things um i just like the fact that it's different really it's individual it goes well it's comfy it does everything it's meant to do it's simple it's got great reliability and build quality you know it's reasonably priced what else are you really looking for if you buy something cheaper then it's going to be cheaper isn't it it's not going to be built as well and it's not going to last as long so we're going to give it a little top speed run now well not a top speed run but we're going to take it on a motorway for a little blast down the motorway see what she feels like and then we will I'm not if I'm honest I'm not expecting the greatest of wind protection from this but you never know this uh, this screen that we've got here might help against the wind so we're gonna tuck in knees in here we are 100 kilometers an hour 110 Listen to her sing, 115 kilometers an hour. If you, if you play with the throttle, you can actually feel it pick up a little bit, but you don't want to feel like you're absolutely caning the thing. So yeah, 115 kilometers an hour. It does more than enough speed. It does everything you need it to do. But you certainly wouldn't want to be sat there for a long period of time riding it down to the Alps I wouldn't advise against that if you're planning on taking one of these to the Alps I would advise hiring a van driving the van down there and then maybe riding this round the Alps I think you may get frostbitten by the time you get there if you decided to ride it I should imagine it's pretty easy to get your boards down not so sure about your knee. Peppy. Peppy is a good word to describe this machine. It's got a little bit of spirit to it. I think the word I've been looking for this whole time during this road test is a character. It's the thing that you can't really describe in these kind of machines. Now, Japanese machines normally are lacking in a bit of character they're a bit like German machines in a way where they're so good and they're so well refined as you've always heard people say on all these different road tests of things 
they just lack that little bit of character, the je ne sais quoi, that maybe a French hatchback or an Italian superbike might give you. However, this is what this machine does have. It does have a lot of character. Maybe it's because the lights remind you of a pair of eyes staring at you. Maybe it's because it's so different and you don't see many of them because it still works as well as any other Japanese machine but it just feels a little bit more special it it feels as if the bike is more than the sum of its parts if you understand so if you put all these bits down on paper you'd say yeah that's gonna work that's a good machine but when you actually ride it it seems like it's more than that put together now coming back to that styling, I do believe that somebody actually once wrote that this was so ugly that it's cute. And I would potentially agree with that. So we've given it a top speed, well, a good run up the motorway. Here we're going to see how she handles this steep, steep incline. So I'm currently at around with my kit on everything about 90 kilos. The bike weighs 170 and I think this is a 14% gradient, something like that. It's a very steep hill, you certainly don't want to walk up and down it every day. And she's quite comfortably cruising up here, but not even at full throttle, at sort of three quarters throttle, 70 kilometers an hour. So it's got plenty of power to get you around. And the transmission is working flawlessly nice and variable no slipping no problems no knocks no bangs just works as Honda designed it quite a lot of years ago now so let's go and find a little spot to park up and we'll get off and have a walk around this little honey so here we are and guys we have found a nice little secluded spot and this is the machine the bug-eyed Honda Big Ruckus, Ruckus 250. Wow. So when you stand back, you can really see how long the wheelbase is there. So let's start at the front, have a little wander around the old girl. Obviously the defining feature of the front end is these bug-eye headlights. Very distinctive feature, and you can see the big, rugged, industrial-style frame around there, which continues all the way around the bike. Now these came in different colours. A lot of these have got a yellow frame with the black plastics to offset against it telescopic forks and a single hydraulic caliper on the front down there we've got our little footboards and all the plastics around the side we've got in his little compartment here our fuel cap and our coolant tank for the water cooling on the dash we've got this wonderful little device here so this is obviously your ignition key slot and with these you can actually as a security device if i can operate it somehow somewhere there we go you close it off and it covers it up with a little lock cover stop anybody stealing your big ruckus nice little feature there from honda we've got our park brake here which operates on the rear wheel i believe so we pull it on and then push to release. Standard controls, which you've seen plenty of with me riding the old girl around. Our seat, this is the super comfy deluxe seat and the backrest on it. So what you can do is ride it around like this with a seat on there and use this as your storage area or if you want to carry your bricks around or your building materials or your bags of cement, whatever you want to carry on the back. Now if you do want to take a pillion, you've got pillion footrests down here and you simply pop the key. I'm not sure why the key is like a sword from the medieval times, but it's quite a long key. Pop the key in there, turn the key, pull that up. And then it simply reclines down and locks in that down position. And you've now got your pillion seat on the back so that you can both look cool together riding around on the big ruckus. You've got a little cubby hole down here to keep all your shotgun shells in and bits and pieces. We've got the original Honda toolkit in there. 
nice little bit of space, plenty of storage space. All these tie down points down the side of the bike, one there and one at the front. So if you do want to carry your three meter length of copper pipe, plumbing pipe back home to uh, carry on with your building project, the big ruckus is the perfect machine. Moving around the back, standard lights indicators, more tie down points down there. The tourist muffler looks a bit like a Gatling gun, quite a stylish thing. Here's our rear shock absorber around this side. Appears we only have the one shock absorber on there with our hydraulic disc brake, uh, drum brake in there, and our transmission. Uh, what else have we got on there? Oh, the seat itself as well, helmet lock standard on most bikes, nothing special to the big ruckus. The seat itself will slide backwards and forwards. If we come around the other side again, we should be able to see this. We insert the key there, and then we turn the key. I believe it's this handle here. This is going to be very tricky on my own. Let's see if we can put that camera down there. No would be the answer to that. But you will have to take my word for it. You can put the key in there. Once the key's in, it unlocks the handle as you just see it move up. And you can actually slide that seat forwards and backwards so you've got full adjustability on your controls. So that is the Honda Big Ruckus in a nutshell. If I was in the market for a scooter, would I buy one? Yes, I would buy one of these. Like I say, you definitely either love it or you hate it. But that is what I like about it. So thanks for watching today's episode of First Ride, guys. Make sure you subscribe to check out some other machines we're going to be test driving and riding for the first time. Look after yourselves and see you soon. Ta-ta!